Welcome to the France 24 Observers, the show that's based on our network of ordinary people who are our eyes and ears around the world. Farkunda is the name of a young Afghan woman who was killed by a mob in March. They believed wrongly that she had burned a copy of the Quran. Now, the killing deeply shocked many Afghans, including our observer Lena, who is an actress. On the 40th day after Farkunda's death, she decided to reenact what happened. It was about just the way she was killed. Uh, for not doing anything wrong. She was um, beaten very badly. Um, she was uh, humiliated. Um, and they ran a car over her. Um, They, they uh, then threw her body uh, on the river, a dry river, Kabul River, and then they burned her. This was simply for to raise our voices uh, against the brutality on women, and of course, uh, for people not to forget about this um, incident. I get mixed reaction in social media. Basically, they were saying that my clothes were uh, provocative and I didn't wear a headscarf. I don't understand. How, how can nobody would accuse the men? How come nobody would blame the men who did that to her? And my, me being uh, the actor and, and, and doing it as real as possible, and they would raise their finger on me. So it's, it's quite difficult to understand their minds. In the performance, Farkunda rises from the ashes like a phoenix. Now, Lena obviously couldn't bring her back, but her performance does appear to have provoked a reaction from the authorities. A few hours after it was finished, they announced they were bringing charges against 49 people, including 19 policemen who stood by as Farkunda was killed. Young Iraqis have grown up with war. First Iran-Iraq, then Iraq versus the United States, then Sunni and Shia violence, and now the Islamic State, which is killing everyone. Ordinary Iraqis have had enough, including our observer Ahmed and his fellow poets. The violence is leading them to take risks they probably shouldn't be taking. I'm part of a collective of poets in the province of Babil. We recite poetry in places that are dangerous, very dangerous. Like, for instance, in the middle of an area filled with landmines. When we got to the area that had been mined, we were very scared. We walked carefully in single file. We were afraid a mine would blow up and kill one of us, or even the whole group. And then Kadem Kanjar did something crazy. He started running. It was like he'd lost his mind. Why did he do it? Because he's had enough of this war and can't take it anymore. One quarter of all the landmines in the world are in Iraq. Imagine that. A quarter of all the landmines in just one country. It doesn't make any sense. And now for some other reports and images sent in by our observers. These planes are fighter jets from Saudi Arabia. They were filmed by the pilot of a cargo plane from Iran while he was trying to land in Yemen. Saudi Arabia is fighting rebels there who they say are supported by Iran. The pilot says the Saudis radioed him to tell him to turn around. When he refused, they bombed the airport to stop him landing. When he got back to Iran, he told his story on state media and was hailed as a hero. The pilot says he was transporting humanitarian aid to Yemen and not weapons. 40 years too many. That is the message internet users in Vietnam want to send to the Communist Party as it celebrates 40 years of uninterrupted rule since 1975. 
Because it's dangerous to criticize the party in public, they're taking pictures of themselves with the message written on pieces of paper or anything else they can write on. It's part of a competition organized by Viet Tan, the Vietnam Reform Party, a group the United Nations says is peaceful, but the government calls terrorists. Flamingos live on all five inhabited continents, including Africa. On the island nation of Madagascar, it is illegal to hunt them. So when villagers living near the Tsimanam Pisots Nature Reserve found dozens of the beautiful birds dead, they were furious. They accuse a former minister of hunting them for sport. He told us he was there at the time, but he denies shooting the birds. Our observer says it's hard to know for sure what happened because the environment ministry doesn't have the funds to properly patrol the park. That's it for this week. As always, you can find more reports from our observers on our website, on our Facebook and Twitter pages, and on our apps for mobiles. I'll see you next time.